guys welcome back to our channel if you are new here my name is Sarah and we are a minimalist family who is a living big with less and today I have for you 10 super easy money saving tips that you can start today so if you are looking for some simple swaps that you can make or just a quick reminder of some of these things that you can do to save you money day in day out this is the video for you There are some amazing channels here on YouTube about frugal living and simple living. And I find that, that all these things tie in so well with minimalism and saving money. So I often watch some of these videos and if you are a little bit further down the frugality line, some of that stuff can be a little bit overwhelming to sort of think about making these massive changes. So today I just wanted to share with you 10 super simple changes you can make that are easy, frugal ways to make a big difference in your finances. So number one is change as many liquid items as you can to pump bottles. Now, if you are like me and have lots of little children in your house, you will know why. Because if kids can squirt their own shampoo, conditioner, or bubble bath out onto their hand or into the bath, half the bottle can go like that. And so by switching my kids to pump bottles, I find that they use way less. But even me as an adult, I find that I use significantly less of those items if I'm just using one pump. And usually that's all I need to wash my hair or wash my body. Or even with face wash, I've found that I use a lot less since I switched to a foaming cleanser. So I just reuse pump bottles I already have, but they can be really inexpensive. I know you can get little soap ones from Ikea for under a dollar, and they are such a great way of saving money by using less of those items. You can also use it for cleaning or laundry products. You know, it's I am so guilty of doing like a big squirt of detergent when really one pump from a pump bottle would be more than sufficient. And since I've switched to this method, I am finding I am buying way less and still getting the same results. Number two is know your per unit price on the things that you buy. So for example, particularly with groceries, knowing what you pay or by weight if it's a big item, but also by per item. So if you buy muesli bars or single packets of chips, it's really good to know off the top of your head, what do I pay per one? Particularly if you're buying like a big pack of yogurt, sometimes when you're doing the math, it's hard to work out what's a good deal because the price in the grocery store might be per 100 grams, when I actually find it's way more useful to know what it is per item. So if I know that a small tub of yogurt is say 40 cents each, that gives me an idea of what's a good deal when I'm comparing them. You can also do this if you usually buy it in a big bulk amount and you're thinking about buying a single serve, what's the difference and is that convenience of having it already sectioned out a good deal or not? But knowing that per unit price can be an absolute game changer, especially if like me, you shop at a couple of different stores and a big grocery store like Costco or Sam's Club because the amounts that you're buying are completely different. So I just have a little notebook where I keep all of those per unit prices so I know when something is a good deal. It's really easy to work these out yourself. So if you just have that notebook with you, you'll know what's a good deal or sometimes even if maybe that one or two cent difference to buy a more convenient item is actually worth it to you. Another thing about knowing the price per unit is also knowing the price per serving. So if you know that your family goes through, you know, a whole frozen bag of broccoli every time you make a meal, that's good to know about how many servings you're getting out of it. So then when you're comparing it to bigger bags, you'll know how many meals you're getting and for what price. 
Number three is when you're shopping online, whether it be somewhere like Amazon or doing your groceries, if you're doing a click and collect order, which I know a lot of us are doing now, particularly with this pandemic going on, is I like to actually switch it. Even if I know what I'm gonna buy, I always do the price, the lowest price first or the lowest price per unit first on my groceries because you just never know. Sometimes the brand name actually is cheaper than the home brand product, particularly if it's on special. Sometimes with the big stores like online stores like Amazon, they put their sponsored products up the top. And so to get to those products that might be more cost effective, you're gonna to have to be scrolling for a long time. Now, sometimes I do this and I end up buying the thing that I was going to anyway, but often I find really great deals by doing it this way. Either I can switch to a better brand or perhaps I can buy a larger bottle and get a better unit price. But anytime I'm doing anything online, whether it be eBay, Amazon, or doing a click and collect order online, I will always quickly just double check the lowest price first it may not change the end outcome but it will at least give you an idea of what other things are out there what the prices are and you'll know you've got the best deal number four is a way that I have saved a huge amount of money and that is to try things out online so whether that is that you teach yourself a skill I actually during COVID, I cut my own hair for the first time. I know that's not gonna work for everyone, but I watched some YouTube videos about how to do it. I have curly hair, which is very forgiving, and I actually found a cut that I really like. And even going forward, I feel really confident to do it. And it's actually, I don't have a lot of time to go and set aside a few hours to go to a hairdresser. So this is way more convenient for me. I also taught myself how to pluck and shape my eyebrows correctly. You name it, the internet is full of great resources that you can try things out. And if you try it and it's not for you, that's fine. But on those things that you can switch to either doing it yourself or learning yourself, you will save money. Now this is particularly good for children. My kids are great learners. They love to learn and that's something that's really important to my husband and I, that they have a love of learning. And one of the things that we really encourage our kids is when they come to us with a new interest, whether it's learning a musical instrument or picking up a new skill, is before we just go out and pay for classes or learn a new sport and go and get them to join a team, we get them to try things out online. Our eldest son actually taught himself how to code using free programs that are available on the internet. Now, this is such a great idea if you have kids that wanna learn a new skill, but you're not sure if they're gonna stick with it or whether it was just maybe a few weeks that they were interested in dipping their toe in the water. So for us, my kids have taught themselves musical instruments, drawing, all sorts of things. And for those interests that they wanted to continue doing, we have actually bought online courses, which are way cheaper than you know, some class type scenarios, or we have put them into those classes because they've shown us that this is something that they're really interested in and it's something they want to stick with. But we've already given them a really good foundation of learning online for free, or we found some really inexpensive ways for them to increase their skills while still keeping it really affordable. So if you are thinking of learning something for yourself or something for your kids, try online first. Number five is to plan meals for your whole day. Now, if you have been around the frugal community for a while, you know the benefits of meal planning and you're probably doing it already. But I would suggest taking it one small step further and that's plan out all your meals for the day. So for example, I used to just plan dinners and that definitely saves me money. But one way I felt like I was falling off the wagon was because for school lunches or breakfast, we would run out of a specific item and then I would end up going to the grocery store for that. So what I do is I don't necessarily say Monday we're going to have pancakes or Tuesday we're going to have cereal. 
I just put out those options and make sure that across the week, I've got enough of each of those options for everyone to have for breakfast. So I'll have enough bagels on hand, enough cereal on hand to make things go around for that whole week. I also have enough snacks in the house, whether that's things we've made ourselves or some prepackaged snacks, whatever that looks like for you, but you've planned it out and you know you have enough and that way you're not going back to the store again. This also really helps if you're going to be out for the day. We have a lot of adventures in our life and I also have a lot of appointments and meetings going on. So by planning out the whole day, I know if I need to take a snack for my three-year-old because we're gonna be out for the day. I know that if we're going out as a family for the day that I might need to have something easy, ready to go for dinner that night. And also I know how many snacks to pack if we're gonna be out for the whole day. So it has made a huge difference and it really has cut down on me running back to the grocery store and also purchasing things when I'm out, like snacks and that sort of thing because I have failed to plan for the whole day. I've only planned for dinner. Number six is a little bit of a controversial one because I know what you're gonna say is, Sarah, take away, it's not very frugal, I get it, but life happens. So number six is know what a inexpensive takeaway option is so that if you are in a pinch, which is going to happen from time to time, no matter how good we plan, life throws us curveballs. And I find knowing what is a really cost-effective thing we can have if we're out on the go that's gonna fill up tummies, that's maybe on the healthier end or is a really good price per head. So if we're feeding seven people and dinner can cost me under $30, that's an awesome deal. Like that's under $5 a person. So that is a great deal for us. And so I like knowing those things ahead of time because usually when life has thrown you a curveball, I don't know about you, maybe this is just me, but it's usually a stressful situation. Something's gone awry, something's running late, something that you weren't planning on happening has happened. And so if you already have had these thoughts, if you know what is an inexpensive thing you can do in a pinch, this is a great way of reducing stress and saving you money that you don't just go and do whatever's closest, that you might have an idea in mind of something that is gonna be cheap, but will still get through this season that something crazy has happened. Number seven is knowing what a whole meal costs. So I highly recommend having a really big list of meals and recipes that your family loves. So whether that's lunch things, baked goods, or your dinner meals at night, is having a list of those. And then on that list, I write an approximate cost of what that meal costs us. It doesn't have to be down to the dime, but it's a great way when you're meal planning to know all those more expensive meals. We might only have one or two of those and then mix it in with those more frugal meals. This is a great way of gauging how much you'll need at the grocery store and trying to make the most of your budget. It's super simple. I guarantee you, you probably have a good idea of what you pay for most things and you can quickly jot that down and have an approximate cost of that meal. You can even break it down like per person price so you'll have a good idea. I also like to know what my kids' lunch boxes cost. So, you know, if I'm adding some of those pre-packaged snacks, I like to know exactly what they cost. And then I have a simple cost in my head of, oh, okay, most lunches cost around $3 or $2.50. And so I can mix and match snacks to keep it around that cost. And it also lets me know when what's a good deal for a lunch and I can keep track of what we're spending and sort of divide it out and have more expensive things sort of trickled out over the week. Number eight is what you will do is cheaper than the ideal. So what I mean by this is the ideal you might make bread and make cookies for the entire week and that would be the most frugal way. 
But if you actually are getting week to week and finding that you don't have time to make bread for every single day or biscuits for every single lunch and that then you're falling into the trap of buying more expensive things because your ideal didn't happen, it's actually cheaper to go with what is realistic. So when I'm planning things out, for example, if we were going out for the day, I know that it's not realistic that I'm not going to buy my kids anything, even though that's the cheapest. So I'll have a look and I'll say, okay, we're gonna be out for lunch and dinner. I'm gonna pack a picnic lunch. I'm gonna pack all of our snacks and drinks for the day, but it's actually gonna be more reasonable for us to eat out for dinner because I cannot make that happen as well as get everyone ready and out the door. And so that is really realistic and I'll have a plan for it and I'll be able to budget for it before it happens. So even if you have these great ideals, if you are finding yourself unable to do what is the absolute cheapest way, it's actually better to plan a really realistic way to do it and maybe that includes some convenience items in your pantry, or maybe it includes eating out once on the weekend because that's what's gonna suit your family. But if that's more realistic, not only is that actually gonna save you money, because we all know that we're gonna fall into the trap of buying whatever we need to buy anyway, but it also saves you stress. You've been really gracious to yourself and you know that you're gonna give yourself a little bit of grace in some areas so that you can save more overall. Number nine is try life without it. Now, I think that sometimes fear is the biggest reason we don't do things, whether that's throwing things away or saving money. Just trying it without it takes a little bit of that pressure off. So an example I can give is streaming services. If you have more than one streaming service, like Netflix here in Australia, we have Binge and Prime Video. We have just tried getting rid of one to see if we actually miss it. And more often than not, there is so much free content available on the internet through different streaming services and your local TV stations that there is an abundance to watch that you would never miss it. The same thing can be said for a lot of those things that we just leave on subscribe, whether it's things we order from Amazon or boxes that we get delivered. Just try living without it. You can always reinstate it down the line, but it removes that fear because we're not making a hard decision that it's in the line. No, we're never buying it again. We're just gonna try life without it. And this can also work if something breaks or if you need to replace something. Maybe don't just run out that day and replace it. Just live with it for a little while and see if it's something that you can live without. So often I have bought things because I thought I needed it and then when it broke, I've forgotten to get it and then I've been able to use something else just fine. I broke some salad tong things not so long ago and I actually found that you know, I've got wooden spoons and I've got large forks that work just as well and I didn't need them at all. Number 10 is whether you are like me with a family or you are single, we all have friends and family in our lives and I would encourage you, if you really struggle being the frugal person in your life and feeling like you're the one that's always like, uh, no, we can't afford it, is you be the planner and this is really powerful because when you come to someone with an idea, you're setting the parameters of what's going to happen. So we are heading into some school holidays for our kids soon. Over the Easter break, they'll have two weeks. And one of the things I have done is reach out to those friends and family that I want to visit over that time and set and planned out some frugal activities to do. Most people love doing frugal activities, but if you wait for other people to plan it, they may plan going to the movies, they may plan going to a play center and all of these things, particularly if you have a large family, add up super fast. So whether it's you know you inviting friends over for coffee, having people over for a game night, meeting at a park or the beach instead of at a cafe or a restaurant, if you've planned it, 
Chances are people won't even realize that it's the frugal option, but you have set aside some things that is really achievable for you and your budget. You're still getting to connect with friends and you're actually doing them a favor as well because they're not spending that money. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed these tips. I know that you guys are gonna have some great tips down in the comments for me. Let me know what are some easy money-saving things that you do that make a big difference. You guys are amazing. If you haven't already, please join our Facebook group. It's a great way for us to share ideas and frugal and minimal wins. We can't wait to cheer you on there. If you are new, we would love to have you subscribe and join our YouTube family. It's absolutely free. It just lets you know when I've got new videos out. Here are some other videos I think you might like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.